Okay, today we're going to tackle a common problem in uh, older Mercedes and a lot of old cars, and that is the driver's seat belt, and a lot of times the passenger seat belt, but seat belts in general, they don't, uh, they'll retract when you yank them all the way out. But at the end of the end of the pull, they get kind of weak, and you know, you let go of them, you get out of the car, and they just kind of dangle, and sometimes they catch in the door, and all that kind of crap, and it really sucks. So today, we are going to tighten the seat belts so that they retract like they did when they were brand new. So first thing I did was take the seat. This is a, a W202 I'm doing this and it's pretty much the same for um, a lot of older or late model Mercedes. Some things are going to be slightly different but most of the stuff is going to be the same. Dog hair all over the inside of my car. And dog. <laughs> anyway, um, so put the seat all the way forward. Uh, I've reclined it all the way forward in order to get to this panel here on the side. This is basically where we want to get to. Um, be back in two minutes. Okay, so first thing you want to do is get any molding out of the way, any trim and molding out of the way that's going to stop you from getting to the center panel. Um, again, this is a W202, others can be slightly different. Um, so I want to remove, pull up the bottom, the door sill cover, just pop up the bottom. You don't have to, to remove it, just pop it up so that this piece will come out because it only ends here. Uh, pull the cloth weather stripping trim away just slide out. See this little clip, this is basically, oops, there's a clip here on the front and, and on the back that we want to expose. So we're going to do the same to the front. We're going to take the front panel off, the, the same thing, the trim on the front and the, uh, the cloth door molding, and back in a minute. Okay, so on the lower B pillar, pillar molding here, you're going to see these metal clips that need to pop off. And you just simply, with a screwdriver, loosen and pop it off, and it will just, when it goes back on, just snap into there. So we're going to pop off all four of those. There's one on each side of the front and then one right here at the bottom, just barely underneath the, uh, the sill molding. So we're going to take those off and be back in a second. Okay, so now we've taken off that. I'm trying to get back a little further, but I can't get past anything here. It's hard to put a camera in, mount a camera in the back wheel well of your car. Um, or footwell. Anyway, center molding is off, out of the way. And we're going to get to, this is where the seatbelt retractor lives, down in here. Now, you don't need to take the upper uh, carpeted part off, but you do need, if you can look in here, I'm going to try and get closer for you. Hold on a second, how do I do this? <laughs> this is awful tough to get in here for you. You see there's a uh, electrical connector here and that's for the, um, oh, what do they call it, it's like the, uh, the, the seat belt extension, or retractor, it's the, sorry I'm half tired today, uh, well, actually full tired, um, it's like an airbag for your seat belt, it, you, you hit it, or when it, when it goes off it, it automatically tightens uh, the, the seat belt pretensioners, that's what I was looking for little clip on them just like on an airbag just simply it's an electrical clip you just simply unplug it pull it out and unplug it don't work on this thing with this thing plugged in if you short it or something it might god knows what it's going to do there but just unplug this and you're good to go so now we're going to unplug that and then unbolt this i think it's a 17 on the bottom to take the uh winder out we're not going to remove anything else on the seat belt just the bottom part this is all we care about right now and back in one minute Okay, so the retaining bolt for the, uh, the seatbelt retractor reel, 17 mil. Simply loosen that, and you can see it's loosening off in there. And we can slide this out. Now the pretensioner is kind of long on the top, so just be careful with it. This is the pretensioner rod. I don't know what's in there. TNT, who knows? <laughs> Something unfun, I'm sure. So it's going to be a little bit of a pain to loosen and then allow this to reel out. But ugh. I might have to move my seat back to give me a little bit of extra room on the. Uh... Anyway, um, for the first few seconds, I'm just going to clean this dust and crap off. Um, you know, 18 years of dust and garbage under there. 
So, uh, anyway, back in one minute. I got. I have to. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to move the seat back so that I get more. Right now, the seat belt's pretty tight. You know, when the seat belt's tight, you can't pull it and get any more. I need to. I need to get the seat belt to unwind from there. So I need to give it a little bit of slack so it will rewind. So I have to pull the seat back a little bit. And pointless for you to watch me do that. So back in a second. Okay, so once I got the seat belt out, what I want to do is unwind the seat belt so that we can pre-tension the spring in it. So I unwound it all the way, and if you hold down, down here there's a little ball and a little arm that holds the geared tooth. You hold the little arm and then basically pull your seat belt. You'll pull it out and it will release all the spring tension inside, so you'll have no more spring tension. There's nothing in here. Okay. So then on you'll see there's a black plastic cap like this on the side that's holding the, the, the seat belt webbing where it goes to the center and this is basically this is the end of the seat belt where it attaches so we are going to pop this webbing up and out there's a plastic rod inside we're going to remove that I don't know if we can do this with one hand so you can see it. we're going to push this plastic rod out so we can pull the whole belt out Oh, there we go. I can slip that out of there, I think. Come on, get out of there. Okay, take the plastic rod out, slip the belt out, and now we're going to wind this thing. Okay, and get tension in it. Oh, sorry, I'm winding it the wrong way. <laughs> so I'm going to wind it the other way uh, and be back in a minute. Okay, sorry, I had to go in and answer the cell phone. So now I'm going to wind this. And you're going to wind it because obviously you're going to want it so that when it retracts and pulls back in, it's got a lot of force to pull the seat belt back in. And this is going to take a bit. Uh, one one thing, I, I took this apart, this side cover apart, and it's got a spring exactly like a, uh, like a pull start lawnmower or outboard motor does. Don't don't pull this side part apart. <laughs> Honestly, this is a pain. I thought, you know, I, I'm going to go through the whole thing and see what the pop, possibly the easiest way. Uh, my thought was unscrewing these two and then winding because I know the springs in there and then winding it backwards along this. But you you just couldn't um, uh, past everything. You couldn't twist this around past. It was close, but you couldn't wind it backwards and put more tension on it. Uh, I heard the spring go. Inside, so I know I had to un take it apart and rewind the spring. That's not fun at all if you've ever done it. So uh, don't do it. So we're going to wind this until it's tight, really damn tight, actually, and then feed the seat belt back in. So I don't know how long this is going to take. It might take a minute or two. So you don't want to, for a minute or two, watch me wind this freaking thing. So I will be back. Okay, I just realized that this, I'm going to take this apart to show you because it there could be uh, issues that uh, people have with um, this spring inside. And as long as you have no springiness on this down here, on the, uh, uh, as long as you, you've let out the tension on it by, you pull down the little, uh, pull down a little latch, move the, the, the center reel till it clicks and then let go and then hold use your finger to keep it from you know flying uh, just to, to control the speed as it as it unwinds itself and then but there's some people that may not have any spring tension whatsoever uh, there was one guy sorry I can't remember your name at the moment uh, that left uh, uh, we had some questions back and forth on uh, on another video about this and um, I think this may be his problem, so I am going to remove the cap. But there's no spring tension, so this spring is not going to pop out. This is what the spring inside looks like. And there's a little center part. See where the, the spring hooks into? Hopefully that will focus. I don't know if it will or not. I don't have it on macro mode. Um, but you can see that there's a little slot that the end of the spring, the flat end of the spring, hooks into. The outer end of the spring hooks along this groove on the outside um, anyway if if you have no spring tension it's possible that this little arm 
came out of that little plastic wheel in the center. There's just the, the little grooves. There's looks like there's two two little grooves. If one broke, you could probably pop it in the other one. But that would be um, if there is no spring tension, you can't get any springiness either way you spin it. Then that's more than likely your problem. So anyway, I'm going to put this back together because um, and just wind it up now, like I was saying before. So we're going to wind it to a basically. It's pretty hard to wind anymore. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't know how many revolutions. I don't know how much tension it should be. I'm just going to wind it till I think it's really freaking tight. Is basically what I'm going to do. Um, you are not going to probably be able to snap that spring in there, but uh, by overwinding it, uh, you probably could overwind it, but I doubt it. Um, wind it till it's tight. That's about it. Um, I'll try and figure out what I think is tight when I when I get it all wound up. What uh, if I can make any type of measurement? On it, I don't know. I'll be back in a second. Turn on. Okay, it's rewound, and there came a point where it really felt like it didn't want to uh, wind <laughs> anymore. So um, I'm going to take the seat belt again. Make sure it's straight. Make sure you keep this sucker straight where it comes out straight into the oh I have to tighten that a little bit more oh, I have to loosen that a little bit because you're gonna want the you're gonna want this flat open that's where the belt goes into and the other side uh, with the sorry can you see that with the four little uh, there's four fingers that uh, the cover clips onto that, that, that retains it, that doesn't allow it to pop back out. Uh, that's on the back side. So you want to feed the belt originally through the open slot with no no fingers on or anything. It's just a wide open slot. And you may have to, like I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to move, pull the little finger, uh, back my spring up a little bit and let it unreal. Oops, so you can see this a tiny little bit so I can get the belt in there. You want to start the belt going in at the top on the back side of this of this bar. I'm going to try to get this to lock. <laughs> Come on, lock. Don't, don't spring for it. I don't want to rewind you all the way again. Come on, don't rewind. Ah, it's unwinding on me. There we go. So i got to wind it back a little bit. Hmm point where the tension doesn't want to grab anymore. There's a little... Or it's not pre-winding itself. Any. Oh, there we go. Click. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to take two seconds to make sure this belt's coming out flat. So take the retractor and hold it in the position uh, that it came out of the car in, so that you know you're feeding the, the belt in properly and feeding it in flat. You don't want to do all this and then have to redo it because the belt's twisted over. Yeah, come on, go back a little bit. Ah, damn it, I dropped it, and now I have to re <laughs> get my bearings again. There we go. So that's flat, and we go in through that side with the belt. Don't use anything sharp to push the belt through or to poke it through. Just be gentle and wiggle it in. You don't want to cut the belt. Okay. It's going to take me a minute. This is actually a little bit of a fiddly deal to do, to wiggle this belt through. Um, I just want to get it through, obviously, the back side and pull it in. And when I get to that point, I will start filming again. Back in a second. Okay, so I've got the belt pulled through. It only took about 30 seconds, but it was pointless to waste your time watching 30 seconds of video of me pulling a belt through. And... <laughs> How the hell? I swear to God, like, 
you know, at the base of this camera where I've got like three tools sitting in this little plastic, oh, there it is. I was just going to say that I can't find this damn rod that I pulled out of here. So we're going to take the rod and slip it back into the end of the belt loop. And then pull that tight. And that's going to slip down in there and that will keep the belt from falling. That rod keeps the belt from going through. And then this little cap. just as allows it to uh, reel on there nice and gentle. So now we're going to pull on the belt slightly, just like you would if you were pulling on your belt in your car to get it to, re, to, to rewind. I'm going to pull on, release tension with this little ball clip down here, and the spring is reeling it back in. And if I did everything right, we should have good well, I'm, we should have good spring retention for pulling it back in. Okay, so that's how you rewind the spring on your uh, on the Mercedes seatbelt. I don't know that all of them are the exact same. I know some of the W202s. Um, I'll show you this one here. This is the uh, the pretensioner, and inside here there's a little. Um, a little geared tooth wheel and a um, like a really thick uh, steel wire that comes out of this so it's like an explosive charge in here when the um, when the airbag goes off it uh, it fires this explosive charge and it yanks on this steel um, steel wire and that basically tightens the seat belt pulls and tightens the seat belt um, there must be something fun you could do with these things. But anyway, I have seen other ones, uh, a, on other W202s that had a wire, an external wire coming up and around and down to the side. So I'm not 100% sure what that is. And um, on mine, sorry, I just removed this side cover to get to the ball. I forgot to show you that. Uh, to get to the ball on the side, there's an, a side cover here that you just have to pry the two little fingers off. They just mount on there and it pops through a little hole on the bottom. And that just clips, snaps back on. That covers up the little tooth, uh, the little tooth ball. This you might have to squeeze this end with uh, pliers to push this back in. This was never meant to be taken apart. Uh, this was meant to be thrown away and discarded if you ever needed a new one. But uh, we're taking this apart to play with it. So this end was kind of, you know, heat sealed into there. So I'm just gonna have to squeeze that so I can get it back in. But anyway, um, I will let you know in two minutes how much if this is better or not. Back in a second. I didn't even realize that this is just a little push pin like uh, underhood clips. Uh, see the little pin there? You just push it back out from it. It spreads the little, it spreads these two little ears when you push the pin in. So once you push it back out, uh, this will be thin enough to get into the hole. And then you push the pin and it will seal it into the hole. It will uh, stick it there. Anyway, back in a second. Okay, as I've said before, I'm not afraid to show my mistakes. I mistakenly put the belt in front of the metal bar on the back. This belt should be not between the, the, the pretensioner and the bar. For some reason, I thought it was supposed to, I, I thought it came out that way. I could have just looked at my first video clip and seen it, but, you know, God, why would I be that smart? Um, it has to go behind. So I'm going to have to pull this whole thing apart. Well, not pull it apart. I just have to untension. I just have to unwind the reel and uh, slip the belt through again, but make sure you slip the belt um, behind. This belt has got to go behind the bar, uh, not in front of it. For some reason, I remembered it coming in front. I don't know why I remember that or thought that, but it doesn't. It's got to go behind the bar uh, or else it's just not going to retract. It's not going to, it's going to be pulling against making, it, it's going to end up rubbing against this and uh, that's not good and unplugging your little uh, connector too. So as soon as I went to put it in, I realized something was up. So anyway, I'm gonna untension this, uh, redo the whole thing again, run the belt back here, and I will be back to you and show you what it looks like in a second. Okay, it's now the day after doing the seat belt, and something was bothering me. It was getting better. Like I said, it was, uh, I mentioned at the end of the video, I think I said it was getting better as I was using it, and it was, but something was bugging me about it. I published a stupid video on YouTube and then I notice 
that I got completely had the seat belt backwards, winding backwards. I guess when I'd taken the spring out of the spring side, I'd put the spring in the opposite way so it wound the other way. And just the way the teeth worked in the little side gear, it made sense to me. But then I realized I was wrong. It was backwards. Um, it worked the other way, which is, pisses me off when stuff works two ways and you get it. You know, you think you've got it the right way. But anyway, the seatbelt is supposed to come out the front, not out the back. And that was the whole the, the whole thing. So if um, anyway, I'm, I've put it out the front now. I'm going to mount it back in. Um, like I woke up early this morning because my I just couldn't sleep because my brain was saying something something's not right about that. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm going to put it back in and show you what it's like when it's actually wound the right way. Anyway, the seat belt comes straight out the front, not out the back. Um, something about that uh, being out the back told me it was right because it wouldn't interfere with the wire for the, uh, the pretensioner and everything else. But, like I said, just once, uh, once I got in, I realized something was up. Um, anyway, it does wind out the front. So you, when you wind it, you wind it toward the back. So that it will pull down toward the front. So it's going to pull this, pull the belt in this way. So you wind it this way. So you're going to wind it um, tensioner side. You're going to wind it counterclockwise. And the other black cap side, you're going to wind it clockwise, depending on which way you're looking at it. So um, anyway, it's just a little addition to the back of this video. I'm, I'm going to have to take down the video and edit it and put it back up the proper way. Uh, sorry for any um, see I said like I said it's earlier I can't even think of the word I'm thinking of it so early in the freaking morning anyway uh, sorry for the, uh, the the screw up thanks okay now done properly <laughs> second time around And as the belt winds itself on there, better. It just gets better and better. Okay, so there's the completed and proper <laughs> version. Sorry for any confusion uh, from the last. Anybody that watched the video before I pulled it down and put it back up again, I can't believe I got that wrong the first time. But, oh well, stuff happens.